everybody welcome back to the channel as you can tell I am in my car and there is a reason for that I am headed to the store to get a prime rib roast or prime rib however you want to call it to smoke tomorrow on Christmas Day but first things first I don't have one my local butcher is closed on Sundays so I have to go to the store and see if I can get one. Now I know this is last minute. I'm a big procrastinator sometimes and this time I procrastinated getting one of these rib roasts. So fingers crossed. Here's to me finding one and and here's a hoping I find one. All right. Let's get this journey on. All right, we're almost at the store. Fingers crossed that they still have these prime ribs left that they had on sale. I'm hoping they stocked it up pretty good. But what we gotta do is turn this corner and we're at the store. We'll go in there and see what they got. Wish me luck. Okay, we are here. Let's get parked and let's get inside and see if they got any left. I sure hope they do. All right, everybody, I got back from the store and we scored big time. This store did not let me down. I'm going to bring you down. I'll let you see all the particulars on the sticker. This is easily a four bone, if not a little bit more, prime rib roast at 6.77 pounds. Now there's only two of us that are gonna be eating this, so I may cut this prime rib roast in half and save half of it and freeze it for another time. Either make uh, prime rib steaks out of it or just do another prime rib roast, who knows. But anyways, let me bring you down below and I'll show you what this baby looks like. Okay, look at that beautiful piece of meat. Here's all the info of what I paid. Such a great deal. The poundage price per pound. And let's see if I can get this camera around here and we'll check out the marbling a little bit. All right, minus the glare, but you can see that that is a pretty good looking piece of meat. All right, it do does come with this stupid pop-up timer. We will definitely not be using that. I'll be using my ink bird thermometers. I'm not trusting no piece of plastic. You tell me when my rib roast is done. But anyways, here we go. I got one. It's going on tomorrow. And the next step is we're gonna salt brine it and put it in the fridge overnight. And when it's time to do that, I will definitely bring you back. But I gotta get home first, so back on the road. Okay, I am back home and it is time to get the salt on this prime rib and we're gonna let it sit in the fridge overnight it's probably gonna be sitting in there probably about 12 or 16 hours so that'll be good enough I don't have the luxury of taking 24 hours to leave this sitting in the fridge or 36 at that some people leave it in for 36 hours we're just gonna get it done let's see what time is it it's 5 20 p.m. At night on Christmas Eve and I will probably get this on the smoker tomorrow at 10 a.m. so that's probably about 17 hours it's going to be sitting in the fridge 
All right, this prime rib that I picked up at the store earlier today is a four bone, and I am not gonna separate it. I am gonna be cooking the whole darn thing. So let me bring it down below, and we will get this salt brined and get it ready for the refrigerator. Okay, I have decided not to cut it. And as you can see, we have a four bone-in prime rib roast. There's one, two, three, four bones. All right, we're going to get this salt on this big hunk of meat. And then we'll be letting this sit in the fridge, like I said, for about 17-ish hours. Let's get to getting this meat all salted up. All right, even though I've contaminated the salt, I will not be putting this back in the container. Whatever I use, I use. Whatever I don't, I'm going to get rid of. I don't really feel like putting on any gloves right now, so... Let's get plenty of salt on this meat. Big hunk of meat can take a lot of salt. Okay. That's about good in, good for the bone end. Let's get some of this side. Yeah, let's pull this stupid plastic timer out of here. Psh, we don't need that. I'm not even trimming any of this fat. I'm going to leave all this fat on there so it can do its dripping, do its rendering, and give us some good flavor. For those of you that have never smoked or cooked a uh, rib roast, like me, believe it or not, I have not done a prime rib roast. I will be following a very easy recipe that I watched online today and it was from Scotty from Scotty's Backyard Barbecue. He is a channel that shows you how to barbecue meat, cook anything, as simple as it can be. He is a down-to-earth cooker that anybody can follow and his recipes are very easy to follow along with. And I'm going to be doing how he did his prime rib just to show you that if I can follow a recipe or a video online, you can follow a recipe or video online. And you can follow me doing this. And I will also leave a link to Scotty's channel and Scotty's prime rib video down in the description below. So you can go check him out, support his channel. If you don't even know who Scotty, Scotty's Backyard Barbecue is, you will not be disappointed by subscribing to his channel. He does a lot of great cooks. All right, now we'll get this other side. Again, this thing can take a lot of salt. And what the salt's gonna do is it's gonna draw out the moisture. And as it sits in the fridge, that moisture will end up getting repenetrated back into the meat somewhat. And then tomorrow, and when we pull this out of the fridge, we are going to be putting some prime rib roast seasoning on it that I got from Kinder's, Kinder's, however you want to say their brand name. But it's going to be a prime rib season blend that Kinder's puts out. I'm pretty anxious to try it. All right, let's see if we got enough salt on this thing. And what this salt's going to do is even though it draws the moisture out and pulls the moisture back in, it's gonna dry it out on the outside. So you will notice a, a definite color change tomorrow, but it's gonna give it the chance to get a real nice bark. Now I'm not gonna be searing this or anything. We're gonna cook it just like Scotty did on his, as simple as you can get, so that you know how to make a prime rib roast without all the fuss of doing a butter spread, and all these garlic and herb spreads that you do all over, you know, these prime ribs you see on all these videos. I've watched many videos on it. I want to do simple the first time. And I'm going to show you how to do simple your first time because Scotty showed me how to do it. All right. I think we're looking pretty good. And as you can tell, these bones were cut by the butcher. So we'll be cutting those off tomorrow after it's done cooking. I should get a little bit of 
salt down in there. Not going to hurt anything, that's for sure. And we're going to leave the strings on while we cook it. Keep everything together. All right. Get some of that salt down in there. Okay, let me get this cleaned up and I will get the rack. We're going to put it on in the fridge. Okay, let's get this piece of meat on the rack. Alright, I'm going to put this in the fridge. I will see you around 10 a.m. in the morning and we'll see what kind of color that this has and how dry it looks, which is good. You want it to look dry so you can get that crust. And then after we take a look at it, I will bring you outside and we will get this baby on the smoker. Until tomorrow morning, I'll see you then. All right, everybody, we are back. It is just about 10 a.m. in the morning and it's time to get this prime rib on. Yesterday I misspoke when I said this was a 6.77 pound prime rib roast, when in all actuality, that was the price per pound this is actually a 10.5 pound prime rib roast but nevertheless it's been sitting in the fridge for about 17 hours we're going to be using this kinder's prime rib seasoning and since the salt dried out the roast we're going to need some type of binder so i'm just going to use some avocado oil you can use whatever oil you want all right let's get the season in this thing and let me remind you it's a, a balmy 21 degrees out here on some nice color. seasoning on this bad boy. I didn't think the little holes were going to work. Alright, here we go. Oh, the seasoning smells awesome. I'm going to do this one handed. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We'll get that smoker up the temp and I'll bring you back when it's time to put it on. Be right back. All right, it's time to get this prime rib roast on here. We're going to be cooking this at 250 degrees, and we're going to wait till it gets to an 80 degree mark, and then I will start basting it with a butter garlic and some more of this prime rib seasoning mixed in all together, and we'll be mopping it on just like Scotty did. All right, let's get this rib roast on. Stop mopping around. Alright, now 
Okay, I'm gonna be using the ink bird here. I already got the thermometer in there. We are, I know it's probably hard to see, but we're sitting at 42.8 degrees inside that rib roast. I did have it sitting out for three hours out of the fridge, but obviously that's not long enough, so we'll wait. And once we hit 80 degrees, I'll bring it back. All right, it's been a little bit over an hour. I'm just gonna come out here and check the grill temp. And even though I have the Ink Bird thermometer app on my phone, we're gonna come out here and see what everything looks like a little over an hour in. Well, that Z Grills is holding strong at 250. I, I really love the Z Grills brand and their temperature probe software that they use. This thing will stay at 250 for the most part for the whole cook. Really impressed with these e-girls. And there's the ink bird. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we're sitting at 54.7 degrees internal on the prime rib. All right, we got plenty of time to go. So I will definitely bring you back when it hits 80 degrees and we will start basting this sucker. Okay, everybody, we have hit 80 degrees internal temperature, so it is time to time to get to mopping. And what I have here is two sticks of butter, about two tablespoons of minced garlic, and about a tablespoon of seasoning all mixed up here that we're going to drizzle all over this thing. And this thing looking beautiful. sides here I'm trying to push too much of the seasoning off Let me get this turned around a little bit oh then it looked delicious smells fantastic all righty get her closed up and i'll be back when it hits 90. okay we've hit 90 degrees let's get to mopping one more time yeah you can tell it's a little cold out here that's right one butter will loosen it up Layers and layers of flavor. All right, I'll see you back at 100 degrees. It looks like I got a little buddy here. Let me show you something. Come here. These are our neighborhood pets. Come here. There you go, little buddy. get a ton of these squirrels coming around we had to buy a 25 pound bag of peanuts to keep them satisfied throughout the winter we're on bag number two all right a little behind the scenes there i will be back when the internal temp is 90 degrees and i'll see you back then okay when i last left i said i would come back at 90 degrees we were already at 90 degrees so this is the 100 degree mark. Let's get the base in it one more time. Okay, that's at 100 degrees. I will come back out here at about 115 and do a last basting and we'll bring this up to 125 degrees internal. I'll see you in about another 15 degrees. 
Okay, we've hit 115. Let's give it uh, one last basting. Okay, I think that's about it. About all we're gonna get out of it. All right, next time you see this, it will have reached 125 degrees internal temperature, and it will have rested for about a half an hour, and then we're gonna slice into this baby. I'll bring it back when it's time to slice into it, see how we did. Okay, everybody, let's see how this turned out. Total cook time was about five hours, and it never swayed past 250. So 250 for about five hours, pulled it at 125, let it rest for about 45 minutes, and it carried over to 136.2 before falling back down. All right, we're going to get these strings cut off, and we're going to see how we did. All right, let's get rid of these. Let's get this, these bones cut off. It's already looking promising. Just put off to the side. All right, the moment of truth. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Cut it right down the middle. Oh, perfect. Perfect medium rare. Oh yeah, look at that. Juice overfloweth. All right, we're gonna cut a little piece of this off and give it a try. Oh yeah, beautiful. Get these bones out of the way. All right, now you know what I'm going for. I'm going for the spinellus, or however you say it. Look at that little bit of fat right there. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Still hot too. Okay, I'm gonna bring you up top and we'll give this a taste test real quick. Okay, look at that. Perfectly pink, medium rare. Can't ask for anything more. All right, let's try these pieces that I cut. And here we go. Mm. Oh my gosh. It's incredible. The seasoning, the juiciness, of course, as you can see. Oh my gosh. Oh, I gotta have one more. Sorry, gotta have it. Mmm. 
Oh my gosh. I couldn't ask for anything more. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, everybody. I thank Scotty for showing me how to do this. I will leave a link to his channel and primer video down in the description below. And I hope this proves to you that you can do anything you see on a video. You can cook anything you want to because I just showed you if I can cook it from watching a video, you can cook it from watching a video. All right, everybody, I appreciate you watching. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. I love answering your comments. And I guess that's it for this video. I'm going to go eat some food. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing. All right, everybody, take care, and I will definitely catch you on the next one.